Yeah, I can hear you, yeah. yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Those Two Geeks. He's Alex, I'm Joe, that was awkward, but I'm on the road heading to upstate New York for a nice five-hour ride right now. So, um, yeah, uh, it's going to be a little bit of an awkward transition on this one, but, you know, that's the breaks. How's it going, Alex? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. I actually um, realized this week that Joe and I haven't really had a chance to chat much. And I I'd watched um, Quantum Mania Thursday night. And normally Thursday is when we start saying, hey, when do you want to record this weekend? And we just didn't start the conversation. So I messaged him late last night. I'm like, hey, you, you good for the morning? Uh, this is Friday night. So Saturday morning today. And uh, there's a yep. yeah, but I'm on the road. So. It's been a while since you've had a road trip, Kirst. I think the last time you were going to Rhode Island Comic Con, maybe, or something like that. Yeah, it's not a road trip. That's like 15 miles away. Like the last <laughs> time I did a road trip, this trip, and I did New Year's Eve. And uh, it was, you know, it was just as much traffic as now because it's Memorial Day weekend. So, of course, it's yeah. Like, of course. Uh, it's, so it's funny yeah, that we had our um, like Victoria Day weekend uh, last week. Uh, on the 22nd of, uh, of May so it was um, I was off that day and people were trying to get a hold of me at work and I'd forgotten to tell them that you know most of the Canadians forget to tell people oh yeah we're not in tomorrow we know we're out it never really occurs to right. us um, you guys now, always seem to have to speak before us that's I, what I noticed like, yeah, the day is the week uh, it's, yeah. it's funny eh? like some some of them are the same um, but when there's like different holidays yeah. like they, they, they are different so um yeah so uh, we don't we don't have a topic today it's not going to be the longest recording just because of um we don't want to risk joe uh dropping out and not being able to stay in the conversation given okay. the uh, the trees and everything that you're you're driving through um i'm on a straight away for 129 miles right now so if it stays like this we should be good i'm on a main be, highway yeah we should be good uh, um, so yeah let's start with quantum mania because i was interested in your your um your comments yeah, so all I said, to, and I'm going to get this up and read out exactly what I've said to you so far about yeah. Quantum Mania. Um, I said, oh, so Quantum Mania isn't great, uh, and I, yeah. uh, and uh, and you replied with that you, you liked Kang, and I said, you know, there were moments that Kang was good, but overall, I'm not going to be upset upset with a recast if that's the way they go. And I think that's what I wanted to touch on. Like, what do you mean moment? I thought he was brilliant, honestly. He, he was, he was yeah, he was good. I just, I don't think, like, so he, here's the thing. I don't think Quantum Mania is a strong enough movie that it's going to get a ton of people to watch it. So I, I think yeah. that given the fact that most people would have seen Kang through Loki more than Quantum Mania, and and I say that because if it wasn't the fact that I felt obligated to watch Quantum Mania because I wanted to make sure I knew what what they said around Kang, I would have happily oh you know I'll pause this go back to it watch something else and come back to it later and probably would have forgotten to go back to it. Like it, it was one of those I didn't hate it. It just didn't right. didn't really do it for me. I just didn't really have any. I mean in the comics the um the microverse isn't something I care about anyway. So it's right. it's a it's a movie set in a place I genu I care I genuinely care nothing about the quantum verse. It's one of those things that for some reason I can't wrap my head around how like how it works. Like how yeah. yeah. And I think I because it. I can never wrap my head around how it works, I just tend to like, eh, whatever, I don't I don't care about it. So with the yeah. entire thing set in the quantum verse, it was already gonna be it was already gonna be tough for me to to get into it. Um, yeah. Paul Rudd was good. Like Paul Rudd was exactly what I expected him to be. Cassie Lang was fine. Yeah, she was good. Um, like I don't have anything negative to say about any of the performances. It's just I don't really have a lot glowing to say either. It was just uh, an okay movie. I thought the best performances were Jonathan Majors and Michelle Pfeiffer. Mm, yeah. Well, yes. Yeah. Michelle Pfeiffer is fantastic. That's what I think. I. And again, I enjoyed Jonathan Majors. I thought he had a tremendous amount of range and and he ca carried and exactly. pushed a lot of stuff through. And and I think that he's he was really good at what he did. But when I say I won't be opposed to a recast, it's a if they're putting all of their eggs in the Kang basket and they don't want Jonathan Majors, 
then I think a recast is fine because I I think that while he was fantastic, he didn't do yeah. enough for me to make the role only his and no one else's. Okay, fair enough. Because word is right now, if you listen to the rumors, Marvel's going with their backup plan and mm. not Kang. They're going with what they planned initially before they decided on Kang. Because they didn't decide on Kang until Loki, when he gave his performance as he who remains, and they were like blown away. Yeah. And then they did Quantum Mania, and then they just said, you know what? He's strong enough that they'll just center everything around him. And they started building all the pieces. Originally, though, they were going to go with um, Ultron coming back. More on the lines of like how Ultron was in the What If series, like this really yeah, ultimate. Like, yeah, right? have that Ultron come back. Yeah, so they were thinking of that. Or they're also thinking of just elevating and bringing up Dr. Doom. But their worry is they don't want to take Dr. Doom up so early because they want Dr. They want Dr. Doom to ultimately be their main, like, top tier yeah. and yeah. villain of all the time. So, but I mean, Kang, it's a shame. It, 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 is, it, it is a shame. And, and I could see in Quantumania how he kept saying how he's killed so many Avengers, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. And I was thinking like, I wonder if he ended up here because he, the, like the MCU Avengers in the future, banish him to the right. quantum realm. Like, I wonder if that's what happens is that like they yeah, banish yeah. Him to the quantum realm and then all of a sudden it kicks this off. It would have been interesting. Like I said, he had good range. The, the, the problems with the movie that I remember was the dialogue and jokes were cringe in a lot of mm. places. Yeah. Like, like Kathy Lang's dialogue, the Modoc, it's never too late to not be a dick. Like, oh, God, man. That just, no. Oh, I, I th- honestly, I think it was Modoc that I was. Okay. The, the movie was kind of teetering on the I'm enjoying this, this is alright and then you see what, then you see Modoc I'm like, oh here we go, here we go, here's Modoc and there's like, oh hey, I'm Darren Chris I'm like, are hey, you kidding me? I bet Jeff must be bullshit with how Modoc is I am, I don't even know if he's seen Quantumania yet, to be totally honest Um, so for, for those who aren't aware Jeff is the owner of the uh, comic shop that I, I work at and is a huge Modoc fan and I don't know if, like, it's one of those things where he said that years ago, he said, I need something to collect, something that's, like, going to be easy to do, fun, that I can just keep on top of. So he collected every single MODOK appearance ever. Right. Like, covers anything ever. So, and then I think he did a read of MODOK's chronological appearances, too, after that. So, um, it, but he's also, I don't know if you follow him on, on Twitter, um, he... He's watching like I think he's got a list of the hundred greatest movies of all time or something. Oh really? Um, and he's going from the bottom to the top. I think right now he's in the ones that are like rated between eight and nine or something, or eight point six or something. So he's like, some of them aren't great, but I'm getting into a lot more good movies now. So like if you've nice. if you've ever watched a, a, an old movie, I can guarantee you Jeff's yeah. either seen it or has it on his list to watch. Yeah, that's a daunting task, Andre Great. That is a daunting task. He he puts you he'll put them on while he's sorting comics or magic cards. So it's like something to have on in the background as he's just going through and every he says every now and again, like I I realize I watched it without really paying attention to it. So I know it wasn't yeah. wasn't amazing, but sometimes I'll find myself just stopping and watching. So exactly. But yeah, so I mean I stand by so for me, I think it was better for me for the experience. Because I saw it in the theater. Mm. I think watching it at home definitely was probably flat. But in the theater, it was just a good popcorn movie. I was all right. Other than yeah. Modoc, the jokes, I was all right. I, and that's just it. Like, I, I watched it at home on Disney+. Plus. Um, yeah. I, right? Like, it came out when the cinema around here was shut down. It, it has reopened, but I haven't been back yet. Um, right. Ironically enough, there's a drive-in movie theater here. And it's got Guardians and the Little Mermaid, and they're both movies that my wife and I want to see. So we're probably going to go to that instead of the actual movie theater, which is um, Guardians, man. It's a yeah. So it is an absolute masterpiece. Like I, I can't. The more I think about it, 
it could break my top five MCU movies. It's so good. It's, it's like everything about it. When you see it, you're going to be like, wow. It was yeah. the palate cleanser that we've been waiting about a year and a half for. It is oh, like good. the reboot to the MCU. Like it feels like the beginning, not the beginning of the MCU. It feels like when the MCU hit its peak point, going from Civil War into like uh, Endgame and all that, that mm. stretch, it feels like that kind of vibe again. Like it has oh, okay. it, but it's self-contained. And they tell the story from beginning to end, and it's not like setting up a new multiversal threat or whatever, but it has gravitas and importance mm. to it. It makes it oh, so good. It really is. Um, we have so many things coming up, man. You got uh, Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse next week. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing that. You've got, I mean, I know it's not always in our wheelhouse, but Fast 10. Um, I know that's coming out. I don't know if I want to watch that or not. It's one of those things. I'm like, that's, that's, that's it's, it's kind of. almost all of them. It's almost like I feel like I have to watch it, even if yeah. it's just on it. So I was I was talking to someone um, at the shop about it, and I, I said like, I, what I love is just turning my brain off and accepting that oh, the, the those physics don't work. And uh, and he said, well actually, um, you know, well actually, he and he said, well someone um, had once sat down and did the math, uh, and they discovered that in order for this what for these stunts to be plausible and actually work, they're in an alternate universe where everything is the same except gravity is like a little yeah. bit weaker i'm like you know e- even knowing that i'm fine with the fact that it's just it's just superhero cars um yeah beyond so, superhero. yeah like so. that time irritated me to no end within the first five minutes when fucking john cena drives his car off a cliff and a plane catches him with a with a um a ladder and swings him without ripping the axle and the frame and everything of the car apart to safety. I was like, no, 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 that's it. Like, I thought Fast Five was bad when they're driving downtown with dragging the bank vault behind them without mm-hmm. ripping the car apart. This puts that to shame. And then, not even to mention the complete lunacy of the, the Dotson with, um, what's it called? Um, Ludacris and... Uh, Tyrese going into outer fucking space. <laughs> no. Like, no. Just, oh, God. But what I find hilarious is The Rock is back in it. Yeah, I did see that. I did see that. Uh, tucked his tail. Tucked his fucking tail because yeah. they weren't he was in it. Because he talked so much shit during Black Adam. Like, yeah, yeah, I'll never go back to that franchise. And he's in it. He's in it. I find yeah. that funny. He's in that and the, the final movie, just the part two. That's funny. Yeah, it's very funny. Talk about eating, bro. Yeah. But um, on top of movies, we've got, I saw the final trailer for The Flash. God, that looks so good. It looks so good. Every trailer looks better. Like, I am so beyond psyched for that two weeks. Like, oh, my God. That's gonna be my weekend. Yeah, I'm. I'm. De- it's one of those things. I'm like, I'm. I want to be excited for it, but I'm like, right. ah, there's there's been so many duds with the DCU that I'm being I'm cautiously optimistic at best. I don't know. This one seems amazing. I feel like they put a lot. I, I you know, yes, it has Michael Keaton, but I think because it has Michael, they put a lot into this. Like, I think this one's gonna have the most serious tone of all the DCU movies. Other than, you know, Zack Snyder and fucking, you know, Barry Trav, uh, Superman, uh, BBS, which had, like, the worst tone ever. But this will have, like, a very serious, serious tone, I think. And I think we're going to get some surprises, too, that we're not expecting. I agree. And I, I think I'm hoping they've learned from BBS and that they don't blow the load in the... Uh, well, I mean, they clearly haven't if we don't still don't really know what's going on. So, um, yeah, you just Still yeah, know. and I, I think that's important. Like going into a movie not knowing what's going on does make it more enjoyable. I agree. I used to love like the trailers and spoilers, and like now I'm so much better off with you know that kind of stuff. Like even I find myself scaling back on wrestling rumors and whatnot. Yeah. But let's 
jump to that real quick because we were supposed to talk about wrestling the last time. I know it's funny. Eh? We we were going to talk about it and didn't, and then this week. Um, AEW announced that the debut of AEW Collision will be in uh, Chicago's United Center. So right. obviously we all know what the rumor mill has assumed that to mean. Whether it's like whether it's true, whether it's gonna be true or not, or anything, mm-hmm. it's like with it being in Chicago and Chicago's favorite wrestling son being CM Punk. We're all going to assume that CM Punk is going to be back on the show now. Whether it's if he if he's coming back, I, it's either going to be as a promo. I honestly I like I'm this is me speculating. I, I have no inside information. I, no, it, it, as I say, it's either going to be a promo or he's going to wrestle someone with that's going to have no build up, no story other than maybe like so I can see that happening with say Samoa Joe because I know they've they've got a trilogy of great matches. Um, like I can see that, but then if he beats Joe, is he going to be the Ring of Honor TV champion? Or, yeah. Right. Or, or if Joe, but he's not going to lose in his debut or you know his return debut in his hometown. So it's going to be like either a um like a a match with, with a title not on the line, or they're going to fight to a draw. I don't think he fights on collision. I think he comes out and it will be a promo. And I think like Jericho attacks him or something. I, th- I think, of- yeah. Cause I know him and Jericho have, if yeah. not mended fences, they've at least got to the point where they'll work together. So I, I, I think you're right. I think that's the way that it's going to be is that he'll come out for a promo. Jericho will come back. Um, yeah. They'll, they'll say some stuff that's going to blur the lines between shoot and cafe. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, and then, That'll and that'll go from there, and that way it will help Jericho move on from the Adam Cole thing because, like, Jericho is an incredibly safe worker, and he's very good at what he does. So it makes sense that Adam Cole comes back with Jericho, kind of keeps right. them both relevant for a bit. That'll that'll end this weekend at Double or Nothing. Yeah. Um, right, and then you've got Jericho coming out on, um, when on next Saturday to go against CM Punk. And it also keeps him away from Adam Cole, because if he's still trying to avoid Adam Cole for everything that went down, then that's another way to, to do it. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, double or nothing looks pretty decent. Um, you know, other than the main event, I'm so against, but I still feel like it's going to be entertaining. I, okay. it's so it's interesting to me is that I think, I think the downside with MJF only having like two or three title defenses at this point is that, yeah. you know, he's not going to, he's not going to exactly. lose it. There's not a chance in hell one of the other three are going to get that belt. Not one chance. So the best you can hope for is a banger of a match, which I think he'll get. I think, but, I, I think what, I think what's the most likely we're, we're going to get is a, you'll see Jungle Boy start to realize that he can, because he did the roll up against Roosh on when he last fought. Right, like with holding a trunk. So I think you'll see Jungle Boy start the descent into a heel turn, and Sammy's gonna make his face turn complete, even if the fans aren't fully behind it. I think yeah. that's what you're gonna see is that he'll he's gonna stop doing the um, the jerky stuff. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Because you know, yeah, I say because pe- people re- like he's really good as a heel, Sammy Guevara, and I think that Sammy as a face is gonna be interesting, but is it is it going to be what you what you expect? So I'm wondering if you're going to see it by the you know within a couple of months just to keep MJF on TV and you know like no I don't want to say keep him relevant but keep him around. Is it going to be a um a case of Jungle Boy or dropping the Jungle Boy and going by Jack Perry and MJF versus the other two pillars? I don't know. I'm, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm I struggling to care at this point, too, which is a problem. I, I th- it's your main event angle. That's the thing that sucks. Sammy has to pull a Cody at this point and keep his wife the fuck away from TV with him on it mm. because the fans just hate her and him together. They just can't stand it. So if you're going to do any type of face turn, keep them separate and yeah or if you're going to keep them on tv don't have them be you know because i think it is the um the, the overly aggressive pdas that they're not the biggest fans of um i mean i'm 
if she, if they if they want her to stay around, fine. But I think you're going to see Sammy d- distance himself from the JAS as well. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, it's already so, happened, right? Like he hasn't come out with them in a while. Yeah. So there's no question in hell that MJF is walking out with the belt, and it's mm-hmm. the right move to make based on those four films. Um, you know, it, it's just not it, feasible. No, and I think what the problem is is that MJF has the belt, but I don't care about his matches no. because he I I mean I genuinely thought Brian Danielson might lose or might win like for a bit I thought hey. Danielson might win yeah it was incredible it was and it, the match itself was fantastic I don't I don't have the same oh MJF is, isn't going to beat the four pillars no M, MJF is going to walk away from this with the belt like by yeah. hook or by crook he's going to walk away with the belt exactly and Brian and in- MJF had really, for the short time that they did it, had really good, intense build-up. Mm-hmm. Like, you caught into it. This is fucking... First of all, all three besides MJF are dreadful on the mic. So, like, they do their talking in the ring. They all fucking suck on the mic. Yeah, like, I... Jack Perry is definitely the weakest on the mic. I, I'm not saying I could, I'm could. i better than him because I could not... Right? Like, oh, I could yeah. not do that. Um... But yeah, I think Jack Perry is the weakest on the mic. I'm really enjoying the words Sammy Guevara is saying, but his delivery uh, seems to be lacking a bit. And yeah. I think conversely, I enjoy Darby's delivery, but his words are very... Uh, it is, it's so vanilla. He has no conviction behind him. Yeah, like it's just like he's he's he said the, he's saying the same things a lot. So I don't know. I'm... It feels like theater. It feels like performance theater like local performance theater with Dusty. Mm. that's the vibe i get he just yeah I, I have no doubt that what he's saying is the facts that he went through but i don't have any heart about it. it doesn't make me feel for you it doesn't mjf is that much better on the microphone but what's great is he proves with ryan he's that good in the ring too he is he is and that i think kind that of competition, you know? yeah and i think that's what um that's what people uh, gravitate like, towards with MJF. Yeah, like if they don't do MJF to CM Punk rerun, it's an absolute travesty at some point. They have to do that. Maybe not like right out the gate, but within mm-hmm. a few months, they need to do it because yeah, it's like the flip side. I, there, I would. I, the thing is, if they do it again, I hope that MJF beats him. Thanks. Agreed. Like, I, I don't think Punk with Punk's had the belt twice. He yeah, he only has it for like a couple of days each time. Yeah, he fucking gets injured. Right, like he got he got injured and then there's a there was brawl out as well. Now I I realized he had a torn pe- he tore his pec or he did something that me- meant he was going to be out for a long time. But yeah. So basically, there it is. He's all but back. After two weeks of fucking every other day, both the Holic reporting, CM Punk is not going to be in collision. And then CM Punk's going to be in collision. CM Punk's not going to be in collision. And it's like back and forth for two weeks straight. Basically, the latest thing is he signed a deal. Both him, the elite, and everybody signed an NDA regarding brawl out. They cannot speak about it. He is signed to collision. They have terms for him. Um, I know he threw a hissy fit that Ace Steel wasn't taken back, but I guess they worked a thing that Ace Steel can't be in person, but he can still get paid and work like remote or work behind the scenes. So he, he just can't be on camera or something like that. And you have to absolutely stay away from the elite. That's what I heard. Yeah, yeah, that's that's same. And, here, and, yeah. and I'm honestly I'm fine with that. Like I don't I don't see an issue with that at all. So. No, I didn't give a fuck about it. Yeah, no, no. Like, I mean, so, I think that, that's just it, uh, CM Punk looking out for his friends. So, fine. In, in your yeah. fair enough, fair enough. So, yeah. So let's run down the rest of the cards and then we can call it a, a morning. Yeah. Um, so I'm looking forward to Adam Cole and Jericho because I love Adam Cole. I love Jericho. He's one of my all time. Mm-hmm. But I really want to see Adam Cole succeed. That guy. He worked a lot to get back, and I would really, I want to see him as AEW champion at some point because I, I want to see him. As I, I I think that's the way you need to go is to take is to give it to Adam Cole 
and let Adam Cole run with it for a bit, right? Because yeah. I think that Adam build up an MJF these Adam Cole feud, and I think give yep. it to, and let Adam Cole be the one to take it from him. Agreed. So do you I, do it at Wembley? Yeah. I don't know if that's soon enough. Like I, the thing is, I don't know who you'd put against MJF at Wembley. That's what I'm saying. Do you do Adam Cole versus MJF at Wembley? I think you do um, Kenny Omega versus MJF at Wembley. Yeah, but yeah, that, that would be great. I think my dream would be Kenny Omega one on one with CM Punk. So, dude, oh, like that, that would yeah. Like, that's my ultimate marquee match. And here's the thing. Like, if Tony Khan's smart this time, he can't play long ball with CM Punk and be like, oh, all right, on the road, we're going to do this. Because every time he's tried, Punk has burned himself out or got injured freakishly. Like, if you have a match that's a dream money marquee match, do this. Do it this time. Pull yeah. the triggers right away. The, the only other way you could do it, which would, or I think, would also be fantastic and would really play into MJF his the real deal. Oh, the is six having... man with um, FTR versus the Elite. No, a triple threat no, with uh, C- no a triple threat CM Punk um, versus MJF versus Kenny Omega and have MJF walk around walk away with the belt after pinning um, one of the other two clean. Ooh, that would be interesting. See, because they, I'm they, a, that's a Right, you you still you still get Punk and Omega at Wembley. You get MJ because if yep. MJF isn't involved in a Punk versus Omega I match, agree. no one's gonna care about the MJF match. Like, the right? So I think that I, I I mean I I think no matter what happens, MJF has to walk out with the belt at Wembley. Um, I agree. I, but I I really want to see Punk versus Omega. I, I think that would be a hell of a match. Oh, okay. And I want I want to see and that way if you get Punk V versus Omega and Punk, you know, obviously doesn't get Omega beat Omega or he puts Omega over but MJF still wins. You should put him in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. Then then you've got uh, then you open the door for Omega versus um MJF, have Omega take yep. it from him and then Ideally, by this point, with Aussie Open signing with All Elite, Will Ospreay follows them as well. And then you have Will yeah. Ospreay versus Kenny Omega feuding for the title. Yeah, I, I agree. So, like, the other match, I say Adam Cole takes it with Jericho. And like you said, mm-hmm. Jericho runs the division. And that way, Jericho stays hot and Adam Cole doesn't suffer. So yeah. that would be great. Um, I heard Jamie Hayter's injured, which is such a shame. Because I want to see her defend at Wembley. Like, I, I think, I think, I think what's going to happen is you're going to get Tony Storm take it off Jamie Hader. It's going to be a squash match, and then at Wembley you're going to see Jamie Hader versus Tony Storm. Like, I hope so. If that goes down, I'm fine with that. Yeah, because otherwise, but, um, like, otherwise you're, you're not. Otherwise, I was expecting it to be uh, Soraya, Soraya versus um, yeah, Jamie Hader at Wembley. But obviously that, because you know, why not? Um, yeah. With Jamie Hader being injured. I, I think you're going to get her. Um, I think it's going to be a squash match at All Out. Yeah, it could be. Uh, and then but, she'll come. Then she'll come back and challenge for the belt at Wembley. Yeah. So as far as Wardlow and Christian Cage go with the ladder match, uh, you know what? I'm 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 bored with Wardlow. It just doesn't I, do it for me. I I kind of want Christian Cage to take the belt if I'm honest. Absolutely, absolutely. So I heard a possible plausible storyline where Christian wins the belt with Luchasaurus with the belt, but he wins it and Luchasaurus defends it for him for a while. That would be interesting. That would be so cool. Yeah. Because one, I think Christian deserves the belt because he's I, on his last. Yeah. I, 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 I can see it almost being the, it's not a, um, you know how Tony Khan loves the, the uh, championship qualifier matches. Yeah. You're gonna get them with Luchasaurus. Like if you can beat my champion Luchasaurus, then you can face me. Exactly. I think that's yeah. what's gonna happen. And Cage knows that no one's gonna beat Luchasaurus. Um, and if well, they, yeah, if they do, so that again. 
you could have Jungle Boy eventually do it. Yeah, exactly. Because Jungle Boy said he wants a belt. He didn't say which one he wanted. So if he if you no, get he Jungle does. Boy versus Luchasaurus, yeah, and Jungle Boy wins, like I can so, see that that being a yeah, thing. Yeah, I'm for Christian Cage. Um, Wardlow is boring. Every time they give him the belt, he's uninteresting. So. Give it to Christian Cage. I'm all yeah. for it. Like Wardlow's a hell of an athlete. He just isn't booked well. Like oh, he, he just is. doesn't, he doesn't seem to have yeah. the um. He doesn't click. Yeah, he just he hasn't clicked yet. Yeah. Um. All right. So I'm, what else is there? Is it the Hardys and FTR? No, it's FTR versus um Jarrett and fucking um. J J, J, J the Triple J. Yeah, I don't even know what the team is called, but yeah, like I I, I would be oh, absolutely stunned if FTR yeah. walk away without those belts at the end. Please don't give it to Jarrett and Lethal. Please. No, I, I think I think that with Jarrett and Lethal getting the singles wins over Cash and Dax, that was their yeah. their concession, not concession, but that was them building it up. Having Mark Briscoe yeah. as a special referee is another way to get Mark on the PPV. Um, right. I do not think you're going to see Jarrett and Lethal walk away with the belts. I think what's going to happen is that um, they're going to get disqualified because they're trying to pull some shit and Mark gets in the way and he's like, no, nah, we're done. This is it. They keep the belt. Okay. I, th- I think they're going to win by DQ, but it's going to be a decisive, you've lost your shot now. Like that that was your one go and you can't do it without cheating. You're done. Okay. And now is Orange Cassidy defending himself? He is. It's in a 20 ma- 21-man battle royale. I don't think he's coming away with it. Okay. So let's just say TBD on that one. All right. And is there a trios title match? Uh, the acclaimed and daddy ass versus the House of Black. I love the House of Black. I, so. I think the House of Black are taking this one as well. I hope because, so. because they they've only just come out with the uh, the house rules thing. Right. Right. So I don't think they're going to waste that already on. Yeah. Right. Like it's going that's going to go for a little while yet. Um, right. Like I think it's going to be a good match, but I, I think that it's going to be it's going to be the um the House of Black that take that. Okay, and what else is left on the card? I don't think there's much else. Oh, the Blackpool Combat Club versus the Elite. Oh, oh of course. Um, uh, give it the to Elite. Yeah, the Elite. I think the Elite are going to take it, but it's going to be a knockdown. It. I think the Elite are going to win, and it's going to like I think you is going to eat the pin because Yuta just seems to eat the pin. Of course. Um, I think what it's going to be is after they win, you I don't know if you've got a handshake or a grudging nod of respect from Moxley for the elite because they've, you know, the the black the BCC have pushed them into being the best right. they can be. I think that's how it's it's going to end up ending there. Now is that the whole card? Are those all the matches? They're the matches I care about. If that makes a difference. That's what I'm saying. So I'm supposed to see this in a theater tomorrow night oh, when nice. I get home. Yeah, because it's 25 bucks to see it in a theater on the big screen with the surround sound, or it's 60 bucks to watch it at home. So I'm like, fuck it, you go go to the theater, and spend half the money. Plus, you don't. I would do the 60 bucks if I got to keep the pay per view, but you don't get to keep it. Yeah. The one so. Thing. Like, fuck. Yeah. But yeah. And it's a good experience. I've been to one, two, three. Um, we two. forgot the uh, six-man tag match with Ethan Page, the Guns, versus the Hardys and Hook. Oh, yeah. Hardys, Hook, and Ethan. Uh, 100, yeah. but yeah, I, yeah, they're taking that. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, and Jade Cargill versus Tyler Valkyrie. Yeah, that's going to be good. Oh, and Jade Cargill versus Tyler Valkyrie. I think oh. Tyler Valkyrie's mm-hmm. taking that. You think so, Jade? I'm, honestly, I'm not going to watch the match anyway because I just don't care. Like, this is... I don't think yeah. remember the last time I watched a Jade Cargill match. I always just yeah, get past it. it. Yeah. A year so. in and she's still green. Yeah. With all those defenses, she's still super unpolished, which uh-huh. is crazy. So no character anyway. defenses, nothing. Yeah. Anyway, it, it's just one of those things. Like I, I guess it is what it is. Yeah. All right. I uh, my time is running. Run yeah, I, I know. I know we 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 were keeping this one shorter. Um, yeah. Guess I, I don't know what I was saying. Um, yeah, I've got to. I actually have to run. Cause I'm I'm getting kind of hungry. Um, right. I haven't eaten yet, and I know you've got a a longish drive ahead of you. Um, um, yeah. 
261 yeah. miles. Hey, I'd say you're almost there, but you're not because miles are a lot no. longer. No. Um, folks, join us next week where we talk about more shit. We'll probably talk about double or nothing again. Yep. Break it and down. Saudi. We'll talk about Saudi, the outcome of Saudi. Yes. Um, is it? Okay. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll check this. I say, I'll say I'll check the scores and I'll check the results on that. Um, you know, <laughs> it's, it's it, it is what it is. But yeah, we will. Um, we'll talk. We'll talk next week. Well, what was I saying? I don't know, but it is a good way to end it. Everybody, you have a safe, long weekend wherever you are, and uh, we will catch you on the next. Hey, thanks for watching the previous video from Graphic Policy Television. Just by watching, you help support our site. Thank you so much. Now, if you're watching these videos, you probably care about geeky things like movies, television, comic books, toys, games, video games, you name it. You can go and subscribe right now to our YouTube channel to stay in touch and catch all the new videos. Or check out our website at graphicpolicy.com. There's a nice link on this end of the video. But as always, thank you for watching. Keep on rocking and keep it geeky.